I want to show you a video in which a woman is speaking to TikTok, actually. And this woman looks like a man and sounds like a man because she attempted to transition into being a man. And so, you know, she looks the part, but she's not. And that becomes clear as she talks that she's still a woman and will always be one. And in fact, she's lonely, disconnected and unfulfilled by male interaction. So before I say much more, let's go ahead and get to the clip and then we'll talk afterwards, all right? Nobody told me how lonely being a man is. I had closer friendships with random women I met in the bathroom before I transitioned at clubs because of how open women are than I've had in my eight years of transitioning. Because women are just so much more vulnerable and deep than men. Oh, women aren't necessarily more vulnerable and deep. I wouldn't use the term deep, at least. Um, they're more emotional, as she is more emotional, because she's, you know, crying on camera about lack of emotional connection. But, you know, it just kind of it makes the point here that she's she's still a woman and she still yearns for the type of connection that women yearn for, uh, which is different from the sort of male interaction. Let's continue. But to have known, and I think a lot of trans men feel this, is we knew what de depth felt like before we transitioned. We knew what it felt like to like have people want to hug us <laughs> and have people want to talk to us and have a community. And then you transition and you're just a guy walking down the street that people cross the street so that they're not near you. And friendships are so much harder to build. And people are colder. And what's hard is none of this invalidates how real and raw women and people who are in marginalized groups feel about cis white men. All of that's valid. Let's just hold, hold right there. Um, none of this invalidates how women and marginalized, marginalized communities feel about cis white men. Um, and all that's valid. Well, I'm not sure what she means by how they feel about cis white men, but what I've heard that they mean is that all of these, I, mean, I hate to use that ridiculous term, but straight white men are aggressive and um, persecutory and that's just false and if you look at you know uh, crime statistics racially speaking it's not white men that are most likely to engage in violence now men in general are more aggressive than women that's certainly true but I mean I, I don't know exactly what she's trying to say there because she's using language that is so intentionally divisive and so intentionally ag antagonistic that it's difficult to even, you know, take on that argument. But I also now understand why the suicide rate is so much higher in men. Because this shit is lonely. And I'm an emotionally mature man. I know how to build friendships and it is still really, really hard. Okay, hold on. He's not an emotionally mature man. He's, sorry, she's a woman. Um, and that's all there is to it. And so she is acting in a very female way because she is in emotional pain. But this is not how an emotionally mature man would act. I mean, you know, I, I grew up in a household with brothers. I mean they don't generally want the sort of emotional attachment that she wants. They don't want their male friends to come up and, and hug them all the time or have deep emotional conversations. It's just not what they desire. Let's continue. Try to think about how you can, in your small little community where you feel safe, can reach out to the men in your life and just help them them feel maybe seen for a moment or do do little little conversations to help their emotional maturity so that they can reach out to people and have deeper guy friendship okay all right so what's really tragic here is that this is a woman who is clearly in pain right she's and so 
one of the reasons, and there are a lot of reasons, why the suicide rates are so high amongst trans people is because even when they transition such that they look like and sound like the sex that they want to look and sound like, they're still not. And they still feel an, a massive disconnectedness and a massive sense of depression that comes from that. Because in many ways, so many of these, especially when they transitioned when they were young, did so because they didn't feel like they were fitting in, fitting in appropriately, and therefore they must be part of this other group, right? So that's one of the evils, I think, with this whole trans thing, is you have to go up to a teenager and say, well, you don't feel like you fit in? Well, that's because you're not actually a girl. You're a guy. If you fit, you know, if you flip, everything will be fine. And, and so you're approaching these teenagers at such, a, at such an age when they always feel like they don't fit in. And saying this is this is the fix, and they they transition or they they get the drugs, they get the surgery, and they still feel like they don't fit in. Instead, they just never fully matured. They never went through the puberty process uh, properly, and there's no there's no fixing it because so much of this is is permanent, and that's the evil. But what she's arguing is just pretty false. And that's not to say that you know we don't have different emotional expectations of men. We do. And some of that, you know, may be erroneous or problematic. However, in general, men just are not as emotional as she is and don't want the kind of emotional hugs and sharing that she desires. That's just not how they communicate with each other. It's kind of like, you hear sometimes about these um, groups that take place at churches and they're trying to have like men's groups and women's groups and the men's groups don't usually do well, they kind of fall apart, the men stop showing up because they don't actually have a desire just to sit around and just talk with with, with one another uh, in the same way. Unless it's like geared to an end goal, let's go to build this thing and fix this thing, uh, they tend to just kind of fall apart uh, in general. But I mean, that that's part of it. They just, they don't have the same sort of needs and the same connectedness and that's okay. But this is a, a really tragic thing, really. I mean, you, you're watching a, a woman break down and she, because she looks like a guy, I mean, she'd fool me, uh, because she looks like a guy, she's going to have a huge difficulty reaching people in the way that she wants and, and I think in some sense needs. And this is just one of the sort of victims of the, the gender wars that we're having. Hey, you're still here! Don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and share it with your friends. I've also got links in the description as to how you can help support my work. Thank you so much!